there is something actually way more serious than performance. There is something actually way more serious than performance. Now, that sounds like sacrilege from a developers. We're obviously very focused on performance, but something much more serious when you actually start using literal values is if you're building your SQL statements by concatenation, which is the most common way we see lots of common, similar, but different SQL statements in a database, then you can see here, I'm building a SQL statement and adding some sort of user input. If you do that, sure as night follows day, you're going to get hacked because this is what happens. If the employee number is the user input you're expecting, this is what you might be anticipating someone would provide. There's your SQL statement and the little bit there in yellow is what you're expecting them to enter in on their web browser, their phone, etc. But someone with a bit more malicious intent, well, they'll pass in the following, 6543 concatenated with and one equals zero, which eliminates that top half of the query. And then they'll go hunting in your database to see if they can find sensitive information. In this case, they'll go look in the all tables view for any tables that have the name, say, security in them, because that's obviously something that they'd be interested in with a bit of malice involved. If they found one called application security, then of course they could build another query, which now goes and tries to find information from that table. They're constructing very elaborate values to pass in for employee number to actually hack your system. At this point, you might be thinking, well, you know, we run little departmental apps and you know, we're, we're not really exposed on the internet that much. And obviously hackers have incredibly sophisticated tools and, and it's very complicated things to do. So hopefully they won't go after us. Here's the key thing is, if you allow yourself to take user input and concatenate SQL, you won't just get hacked, you'll get hacked really easily. What are these incredibly sophisticated tools that hackers have? The number one hacking application on the planet is any browser. It literally is that easy to hack you. I'm not going to run a tutorial for how to hack someone because A, that's not very ethical and B, here in Australia, that's called illegal and I'd rather not be arrested before the end of the call. But this is what happens. You can actually go to Google, go to Bing, go to your whatever browser you prefer and you can type in some specially crafted search strings, which I've carefully blurred out. What that literally gives you as a result is a list of sites that are great candidates for hacking. It literally is that easy. It's like they're holding up a flag saying, yep, come visit us. So I could pick one of those at random. Once again, I've blurred it out. And all I do is do some special edits in the URL that they've provided. And if I can get it to crash, then boom, it's that easy. I've now made them a candidate. I've proved that they are a candidate for hacking. And with those special edits in this particular site's example, not only did they say, basically you're, I'm, I can be hacked. They even told me they're running my SQL. Now I need to do that elaborate construction of user input to turn a URL into a SQL statement to go hunting for information. And it's incredibly long and I've magnified a bit there, but obviously that would take a lot of expertise and a lot of hacking intelligence to be able to build and construct those URLs. So you might be thinking, well, I'm still a little bit safe because that obviously requires incredible skills. Well, unfortunately, I'm here to tell you that that's not the case either because there are freeware tools that will do this for you. You literally type in the URL that you think can be hacked at the top and then you press buttons. You say, okay, go get the tables and it will construct those incredibly long URLs to find out the list of tables from the data dictionary. I pick some tables I'm interested in and then I simply press get the columns and that'll give me a listing of the columns for that particular table. And when I found the listing of columns, in this case, you can see on the left, I found email and password. That looks interesting. I'll click get data and hey presto, out comes some emails and some passwords. Literally, you need a browser and some free software and you can hack a site literally in five minutes. Just to put your fears at rest, the website I use there is actually one put up by a security analyst called Troy Hunt. He's also here in Australia. You can read that blog post there about how easy it is. So he actually puts a website up there that is freely hackable. So there was no, no, no real harm there done there, but you can see literally it is a browser and a free tool and you can hack anyone that doesn't check their user inputs and doesn't find them. It literally is a five minute job nowadays to hack you if you are building SQL statement by concatenation. So if you want fast, secure SQL, 
you must always bind user input. That is your number one best practice. You might be thinking, well, this is an old topic. It's, you know, it's been done to death. Here's a Stack Overflow question I helped someone with literally just the other day. You can see they are still, even in the world of C Sharp, any language, people are still bidding SQL statements by concatenation. This question was asked literally a week and a half ago on July 27th. We tried to set this person straight. Thank you.